guys. One particular emphasis I'd like to make is the role of play, particularly with young learners, with children. Very often there's this, this tendency for people to want to prematurely impose demands on young learners. You know, uh, for example, as a father, they would be expected that I would impose martial arts on my son, very, very young, and want him to be great and to invest into it. And this is natural. We see it in basketball, we see it in football, we see it in hockey, we see it across the spectrum. Now, as understandable as this is, um, and as many examples as you can point to, for example, of a, of a Tiger Woods, you know, as a young man being coached by his father and, and being extraordinarily focused at a very young age, as many examples as there are of these great, great masters becoming proficient um, through what might be termed premature specialization, overall, what's important to understand is that research shows there are normal developmental stages. Cote did significant research on this, and he basically showed that from the age of 6 to 12, this is what he termed the sampling years. And in the sampling years, he said that a healthy child should be exposed as, to as many possible sports and physical activities as they wish to be, and that the goal should primarily be fun and exposure to a variety of mechanics, so that the child is learning how to throw and to run and to coordinate movement. This is far too early for them to be obsessively fixated on one thing. And it's very important that that 6 to 12 age gap, that fun, enjoyment, and discovery be the main focus. He then noted that between the ages of 12 to 15, then we get into what he termed the specialization years. And this is the period where the child will reduce the amount of activities to maybe two or one, and they start to specialize. They start to say, I'm going to make basketball my main thing, but I also do jiu-jitsu after school. They specialize, they put more time, they start to become a bit more serious about it as a craft. And then basically we get to the 16 and up phase, and this is what he termed the investment phase. And the investment phase is where people have a significant increase in the amount of time spent, peripheral activities, for example, physical conditioning to facilitate performance in the sport start to occur. People start looking externally, watching videos, assessing other you know, predecessors and greats in the sport. And this is very, very normal and natural as a progression. So I mention this here because many of us are guilty of, with good intentions, overly imposing or expecting too much from the young around us. So I strongly encourage you to leave that first period of 6 to 12 years to really be a sampling period where people can focus on fun and exposure. What you're doing there is you're teaching that child to have a wider referential, a wider frame of reference. You're teaching them to be motivated by joy and to be motivated by wonder and exploration. And you're creating a more emotionally healthy sportive practitioner or martial artist down the line. In that 13 to 15 specialization phase, that's where they learn assertiveness. That's where they start to learn to make decisions. Rather than having resentment against you for having imposed this Spartan work regime on them, this is where they make the decisions, and this gives, leads to more sustainable motivation and, and more joy in the activity. If you look at top performers, whether it's a Michael Jordan or a Kobe Bryant or whoever you want to look at, there usually is this almost transcendent reverence for the activity. So while it's true they might have been exposed or expected to do a little bit more prematurely, they always did so with some degree of passion that transcended and they were driven by that. There are far, 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 far more young men and women who have had premature expectation placed on them, who did not rise to the challenge. You see it in every you know, soccer mom or basketball dad screaming at their kid to perform, and you look at them, and they're not some kind of expert, and yet they're expecting the child to exceed and to be better than them. Tiger Woods' dad being a, a classic example. The expectation to be better than you is being imposed on the child. Now, when we get into adult play, it's very normal to say, well, I'm 16 and up, therefore I'm just going to go to these specialization periods. But I find it helpful in my own training to try to always look at these developmental phases, and even with adults, to try to have periods of playfulness, of introductory playfulness, where they sample different movements, where I take in elements of different arts or different physical challenges for them, to fill in the gaps that they might have had created by negligence in their younger sportive years. Then I try to nurture investment when, when a, an adult practitioner starts to specialize. I always say you have to 
Choose which tools are in your toolbox. What type of fighter you want to be. When they have enough of a foundation to start to choose that, it's very important that you as a coach support those investments and teach autonomous decision making. But always again with that spirit of playful joy and exploration. If you have a very aggressive and competitive gym, you deprive them of that pleasure. And that, that ultimately sustainable motivation and healthy practice will go with it. And then finally, the student should, in their adult years, mature perhaps much more quickly, but get to that period where they might want to be that, you know, that, that heavy investor who's going to put a lot of time in there. Truth be told, there are simply a lot of people, as adults, who are content occasionally playing, like the stage one learner, or more commonly specializing, coming twice a week, once a week, having a good exposure, saying this is what I do at night, but they're not heavily investing. I find it very helpful to always revert to Cote's three phases of development because it gives me a structure and a framework for how all of us learn. As adults, if we are youth or infants to the martial arts, we do recreate those three stages nevertheless. So food for thought, whether or not you have your own children or you teach children uh, professionally, or whether you're just an adult learner in your own solo training or in your coaching, I find these three phases give helpful insights in how to, into how we naturally progress.